Democrat voters do not see that this is an indication of how the next, the 2.0 of Joe Biden's term administration is going to look like under Kamala Harris. What makes you think she's going to lead any different? Can you talk about how your vice president, who is running for the presidency, has worked on these uh, crises and what role she has played over the past several days? Well, she's, I'm in constant contact with her. She's aware we're, we're, all, we're singing from the same song sheet. We, uh, she helped pass the, all the laws that are being employed now. She was a major player in everything we've done, including passage of uh, legislation which we were told we could never pass. And so she's been, uh, and her, her staff is interlocked with mine in terms of all the things we're doing. When we examine not just this disaster, but there have been other disasters that have happened that have been poorly managed, such as the withdrawal from Afghanistan, that was horrible. For every disaster that has happened during this administration, I am trying to understand how Democrat voters do not see that this is an indication of how the next, the 2.0 of Joe Biden's term administration is going to look like under Kamala Harris. What makes you think she's going to lead any different? She's been the one that she, matter of fact, Joe Biden threw his sister, his sister home girl under the bus when he was basically interviewed today, Joe Biden essentially said, oh, no, every decision that we've made in this administration, yes, Kamala Harris was very much involved. There was no decision that went down that she was not involved in. And I'm like, oh, so she really can't distance herself from your bad policy and decision making. Y'all are essentially one in the same. So this is not the first time that their response to something has been irresponsible or they've been slow to act. The end of the day is Kamala hasn't, this woman doesn't have a clue on how to rise to the occasion and lead when it matters most. Because one, she's too busy out here lying and trying to keep people from figuring out her true identity and that she ain't really black, right? That's one thing. But the other issue is, is that she is simply a figurehead to, to fit into this, 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 this narrative of being the first. And I said we're going to get to it. I can't get ahead of myself on why I'm saying that she was presented and is being used as the figurehead for the vanity metric of the first. But what I want to say about this is this is why the American people need to think twice about career politicians. And I'm not saying that all politicians are bad, but there is something to be said about career politicians. And I'm going to define career politicians are individuals who politics is all they know. Like they may have spent a little bit of time on the legal side, but for the most part, they've been involved with politics their entire life. The reason why I have issues with career politicians is because they've really, they've never balanced a budget. A lot of them have never run a small business. Half of them have probably never even balanced a checkbook. They probably don't even know what a checkbook is, depending on how old they are. But the reason why I am, I'm not really team pro-politician is because of the lack of accountability, how they will spend your money with, without, with, with no regard to the fact that it's not their money, Career politicians don't tend to be good stewards over other people's finances and resources. They think it's just an endless supply of money. And when they run out of money, they do what AOC says. You just pay for it. She's, she was incapable of running her own life and started politics very early. Same with Kamala Harris. I mean, Kamala Harris went from Howard law school, jumping in Willie Brown's bed, and then jumping to Montel. Like, she's, she don't know what, it's, what it really feels like to struggle and have to manage her life well. Because from a very early age, she was ushered into prominence, money, wealth, status, power. That's all she knows. All she knows is tell me what to do and what I need to say so I can get to the next level. But actually having to lead well and deal with the consequences of her bad choices and bad decisions, I don't think she has any sort of measurable experience in dealing with that. I just don't.
But another point that I wanted to make, we already have blue states because of her poor leadership and inability to lead well on this immigration issue. And it's not an inability to lead well. She did this on purpose. She told these people to come. She made sure that that border was unsecured because they got a plan, right? They have a plan. There's something up their sleeves. And we, in the fullness of time, you guys, it's, we've now been able to figure out exactly what the plan is. But what happens is now we've got all these blue cities, New York, they're cutting funding because they can't get the money that they need from the federal government to take care of the migrant crisis that they ultimately, the reason why they inherited it is because of their, their, their sanctuary city status. We saw the same thing happen in Chicago with Mayor Brandon Johnson, who was like, oh no, we've got more than enough resources. Isn't it funny how he just like tagging your money Tell me, we got more than enough. There's more than enough for everybody. Now he like, oh, we don't have no money. We're in a deficit. I thought there was more than enough, Brandon. All these blue cities, everybody's bankrupt. They ain't got no money. FEMA is now broke. And didn't we just give like $8 billion to Ukraine? Like the little, the little actor, the little pimp dude, uh, uh, Zelensky just came over here looking as unprofessional as he can be. Coming so he can get some more money to fight a war that he know he can't win. And the Democrats just keep approving. I, 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 I have reason to believe that these people are laundering money. Like these professional politicians, somebody is getting a kickback on the back end. Because why are we giving so much money to Ukraine, but yet all we have is $750 for American citizens who do to no fault of their own. This is not some sort of welfare lapse. This is God came down and was like, y'all are going to get a hurricane and you knew it was coming. And all we have is $750 for these people. And all of them, and I don't know what they're expecting people to do with $750. I don't know. But it is insulting. It is shameful. I saw some of you saying it is treasonous what this, this administration is doing. But my question to the pro blackity blacks out there, what do you have to say about this? Do you think this is an acceptable way to run a country? To siphon money from the FEMA fund? Because you've overspent and we really don't have it. So you just going to rob Peter to pay Paul. And then when Peter's like, um, I need my money. You like, Ooh, what had happened was we ain't got it. That's essentially what has happened here. So, so, so not just the pro blackity black Democrats, the one who are just voting for Kamal because they want her to be the first. Are you prepared to be last? Because if that's the reason why you're voting for her, that's my question to you. So you're going to vote for her because you want her to be the first. But how does it make you feel that she's putting you last and she's doing it over and over and over again? Your cities are riddled with crime. I know CNN keep out here lying to you, telling you no. No, crime is down. You know different. People in Chicago know different. People living right here in Atlanta, we know different. Crime is not down. Crime is up because res police response is down because police response, we don't have enough police because you've demonized them with your defund the police rhetoric. Don't nobody want to be a cop no more. No one wants to protect and serve. So what's the plan, Democrats? You, you got Kamala out here putting everybody else first except for American citizens, but she wants you to prop her up and elect her as the first. Why? What good is it going to do to America if we just elect a pseudo black woman, female, allegedly, as the first president of the United States? Why? So we can say we did it? And then the country, we turn into a communist hellhole? While it ha like we just watch it happen because that's what's going to happen. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Standard of Truth podcast. If you've enjoyed today's conversation, don't forget to check out the Standard Home and Living Lifestyle Store at standardhomeandliving.com. We've got everything from book studies, journals, and even podcast merch. So you can take a piece of this conversation with you wherever you go. And of course, be sure to follow me on Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok for more updates, behind the scenes, and daily insights. 
You can also stay connected at thestandardoftruthpodcast.com where you'll find all the latest news and events, including live events coming to a town near you. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Until next time, keep standing firm in the truth. Grace and peace. Thank you.